all here today because we are all young people who have been personally affected by the global war on drugs. I lost my mother to an overdose. He went to college his first day, and that evening he overdosed and died. I lost a really good friend of mine to the gun violence in Chicago. Let's talk about Tina, a seven years young lady who is often as a result of her mom died as a result of a police raid. World leaders, this has to stop, and America has to set the precedent for the rest of the world because we started this. I'm asking you, should we support or we should punish this people? We are at the United Nations headquarters in New York City where governments have gathered first time since 1998 to discuss the global drug control system. In 1998, the slogan was a drug-free world, we can do it. But now it's very obvious that we could not do it, the world is not drug-free. Some governments, including those in Latin America who suffered the most from the harms of the global drug war, initiated uh, discussion on the alternatives of current drug control policies. Ante las limitaciones del paradigma prohibicionista, se debe atender el tema mundial de las drogas desde la perspectiva de los derechos humanos. Este cambio de fondo implica modificar el enfoque eminentemente sancionador. The outcome document of the General Assembly has been prepared by the Commission on Narcotic Drugs in Vienna last month. The document was adopted at the opening plenary of this meeting, even before any kind of debates could have started here. Why did the General Assembly adopt the outcome document on the, in the opening session? Is it, isn't it more logical to discuss it and then uh, adopt it in the end? Probably that was the idea of the President of General Assembly, to save time for this interactive discussion and debates, uh, rather than to start discussing document, which has been already discussed and approved by consensus at the CND. It's a pity that uh, first we adopt the document and then we discuss. It's a missed opportunity because we have a lot of people around having uh, different views, uh, new ideas. So we can regret that uh, the document doesn't reflect all this uh, rich and uh, open debate that we can have inside events. The fact that it's been so difficult to have meaningful input um, into both the document and to the proceedings um, really has been disappointing. That being said, uh, many of the country statements that we've seen over the last two days now um, have been really positive. We will be introducing legislation in the spring of 2017 that ensures that we keep marijuana out of the hands of children and profits out of the hands of criminals. While this plan challenges the status quo in many countries, we are convinced it is the best way to protect our youth while enhancing public safety. The outcome document, disappointing as it is, I think has some useful language. First of all, human rights, right? The words are used, so I think that's great. Um, I think the big win out of that process is actually palliative care. There's a really good, a portion of the document on palliative care recognizes that it is the international drug control that stood in a way. So I'm actually very optimistic. Uh, I'm optimistic about, what, I mean, when I see the, the wisdom and the energy and the strong statements of member states, you know, and Switzerland coming out strongly against death penalty and European Commission, I mean, all of that, you know, gives me hope that we're moving that tanker. We have a strong and unequivocal opposition to the death penalty in all circumstances and consider that the death penalty undermines human dignity and that errors made in its application are irreversible. We have to reiterate that there is no international consensus on the abolitions of the death penalty. The death penalty is not prohibited under international law. The applications of the death penalty is a criminal justice matter for individual states to be decided by the competence authorities. Those in favor with the death penalty have lost their human connection with the idea of a humane punishment. They perceive the death penalty as an instant solution to address the illicit drug trafficking. But this is elusive. Because when stumbled upon the world drug problem, humankind can fix it in a dignified manner. Thank you. I am incredibly, incredibly proud 
of how civil society came together. The fact that people come with facts, with data, with, with actual substance to a real discussion is incredibly impressive. It's not a war against drugs. It's a war against us. It's a war against our families, our sons and our daughters, our mothers and our fathers. So let's call it for what it really is. So we're carrying with us people, family members, community members who have suffered the brunt of this war on drugs policy. This caravan began on March 28th in Tegucigalpa and we traveled up from Tegucigalpa through Honduras, El Salvador, Guatemala, Mexico to get here to the United States. This is a replication of the 1930s alcohol prohibition car. So we've put the same lineage on the side, the same words on the side, to show that um, you know, history is repeating itself, but for drugs this time. Now, I lost my 15-year-old daughter Martha. She took ecstasy on a Saturday morning in Oxford um, and died two hours later. All dangerous drugs have to be legally regulated. Had my daughter taken something that was labelled with dosage information and ingredients, she wouldn't have gone on to take enough of five to ten people and have an accidental overdose. She would still be alive today. I can show to, to the world then there is a, a different uh, way to see this issue. That is the regulation of markets. The cops that arrested me, I want them to look me in the eye. I want to look them in the eye and say what they did. Separated me from my son. And what I did is going to be legal soon. Can you explain us about the place we are now? We are in a pop-up museum of drug policy. For me, social change is about engaging the mind, the heart, and the emotions. And this is the space to do that. If you walk in uh, and see uh, and see the handkerchiefs that are that were uh, crocheted by moms whose sons are missing. When you look at the picture of a young Iranian woman who was executed for a drug crime, when you look at the bed sheets with beautiful art produced by someone who has spent seven years in federal prison, a young man who spent seven years in federal prison for a drug violation, you know, how could your emotions and heart not engage? The bad news is that Unga's declaration perpetuates a damaging status quo. The good news is that Angus is just one milestone on the road to transforming drug policy. The world community is not ready, is not willing uh, to uh, have the uh, change of paradigm that is uh, absolutely necessary. Governments, societies, uh, organizations should debate not only the question of decriminalized consumption, but also how to regulate uh, the provision of drugs. How do you see the, the discussion around regulation, legalization going forward in, in the United States and around the Angus meeting? Uh, so I think there have been tremendous changes. I've seen more changes in the past three or four years than I have in the previous 15 years combined. We're going to look back someday, or at least our, or the next generation will look back, and ask why did you ever go around incarcerating human beings for what they do to their own bodies? Um, it, it's a, a profoundly absurd concept. Where in the Constitution of the United States does it say the government has the right to kick down your bedroom door and throw you into prison for something that you do with your own body, absent harm to anyone else? There's a sovereignty of the corpus. Your body belongs to you. You were born a free and independent human being. You're not a subject of a king. You're not property of a state. And what you choose to do with your lungs, with your veins, with your brain, with your mouth, with your stomach, or any other orifice, either recreationally, sexually, or anything else, absent harm to others, should be your own business. Because if you don't own your body, what do you own? <laughs>